Hello, my name is Dr. Ron Dalton Jr. and I want to welcome you to this video. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about the major causes of spinal disc conditions and those conditions include a bulging disc, herniated disc, a ruptured disc, and degenerative disc disease. Now in order to understand what could actually cause these conditions I first want to talk to you a little bit about what a normal disc looks like and how it functions because this is really important in order to understand what we'll be talking about in today's video. So if you look at the image that I have here on the screen what we're looking at is a normal spine. So on the left here you can see that we've got the vertebrae or the bones stacked on top of each other and then in between every set of two bones we have a spinal disc and if we take that disc and we flip it up to where we're looking at it from the top down it's going to look like this image over here on the right and this circular structure towards the front is the disc itself and then right behind the disc we've got the spinal cord here and the spinal nerves and then this here is just bone that's uh, part of the vertebrae now what the disc does is it serves a really important function within your spine and essentially what it is is it's a shock absorber so anytime that you're moving or you're running or jumping or doing whatever it is that you're doing there's forces that are applied to your spine and what happens is that rather than those forces going into the bone which actually could cause these to either break or it could cause other problems what happens is that the discs will actually absorb that shock and that's their main purpose they're actually a special type of ligament and what a ligament does is it holds bone and bone together. So the fact that this disc here is between these two bones, one of its functions in addition to acting as a shock absorber is that it's going to hold these bones together and make sure that they don't fall apart, which is really important because you need that sort of stability within the spine. So when we look at a bulging disc or a herniated disc or one of these other problems, let's go over here to the right and I'm going to show you what actually happens here. So if we look at our normal disc here, what you're going to notice is that you've got this outer wall, which is nice and strong normally, and then within the center there's this soft jelly-like fluid that lives within there. And if you look over here on the right-hand side of the disc, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this so that you can see what happens. In the case of a bulging disc, what's going to happen is that that wall is going to get injured or damaged for some reason, and as it gets weaker, the nucleus or the center of the disc is going to start to shift into the weaker area, and this disc is going to start to bulge. And of course, the reason this gets so painful for people is that it's going to start to put pressure on the nerve that lives right behind there, and that's going to cause a lot of problems for a person. Um, the same thing is true with the herniated disc. Essentially, these problems are all the same condition, it's just that they're different stages of the condition. So what happens in the case of a bulging disc is that this wall stays intact even though it's starting to bulge. With a um, with a herniated disc, what's going to happen is that instead the wall is actually going to tear and the nucleus is going to start to shift through the wall. However, with a herniated disc, it doesn't tear completely through on the outside. When it does get to the point where it tears on the outside, now we call that a ruptured disc, and usually at that stage, the part of the nucleus will start to come outside of the disc, and it'll go into the spinal canal here where the spinal cord lives, and that's a real serious problem. So these are essentially the things that we're dealing with. When we talk about degenerative disc disease, it's a very different type of condition because what happens in that case, let me see if I can bring up a good picture for you of it here. Yeah, if we go back to normal, and if we look over on the left, let's focus on this disc right here between these two bones. What you're going to see is that with degenerative disc disease, the the nucleus, which is the center of the disc, it has a lot of water content normally. But over time, if you overuse the disc, or if it you know, has a lot of wear and tear, that water will start to disappear, and it will start to dehydrate. Well, when that happens, the disc is actually going to start to get shorter. So you can see that change happening here. And over time, other changes will take place within the bone also. But essentially what's happening is that you're lo losing the fluid within the disc, and it's losing its elasticity and its ability to absorb shock. So it causes all kinds of problems when you get to that point where you have degenerative disc disease. So now that we've talked about what the problems are, let's talk about what causes it, because now this will make perfect sense to you. There's typically um, a couple of major causes that we know for sure will cause this condition. And the number one most common cause is an injury of some sort or a trauma. So things like car accidents, slips and falls, these types of things can actually cause that to happen, because what happens in those cases is that 
the disc will absorb too much force with whatever the injury is and it will damage the wall of the disc and that will start the entire process of this happening for you so that's the major concern there is a genetic factor involved here although they say that it only plays about a 30 percent role in these conditions but if you have family members who have spinal disc problems there is a chance that you can develop them as well because what will happen is that genetically this wall will be weaker than it normally would be in the average person and so it makes you more prone to these types of conditions the next thing that we also know is that toxicity within the body will cause this to happen as well. So if you have a poor diet or if you're a smoker or if you don't exercise regularly, which helps cleanse toxins from the body, if you don't have regular bowel movements, in all of these cases what's going to happen is that your body is going to build up toxins and those toxins will actually cause damage to the wall of the disc and it can lead to these types of conditions also. Um, there's actually been research done that shows that smokers have a much higher likelihood of developing spinal disc problems than a person who doesn't smoke. So these things are things that we know for sure will cause damage to the disc wall and can lead to these types of conditions. Now I've actually written all of this information out on my website and what I'll do is in the video if you look below here you'll see that there's a description area usually it says about and you'll notice in there that I'll have a link in there that can lead you to the website to show you this page. But I have all of this information written out for you here. And if you scroll down on the page that I lead you to, what you're going to see is that at the very bottom, there's a table of contents. And with this website, I've actually basically made a resource that gives you all the information that you'll ever need to know about this condition. So we talk about what the different types of conditions are, um, the symptoms that are related to it, the causes, which is what we just talked about. We talk about all the different treatment options, so I go through all the medications that most doctors will prescribe, and we talk about side effects, drug interactions, how the medications work. I talk about natural alternatives to the medications that you can use instead if you're one of the people that would rather do that. I'll talk about exercises for spinal disc conditions, surgery, and then I have a program that I use to help people with this also that I talk about on this website as well. So uh, you can go ahead and go to that link now. Go visit the website which is healyourbulgingdisc.com and go through the information because I think you'll find that it's really helpful and it's really detailed and complete as well. So, all right, well, I just want to thank you so much for spending time with me here today watching this video. I hope you found the information useful, and I hope you have a great day.